right uh, i want everybody um we have come long way in our ecology lecture series uh, starting from uh, individuals to communities sorry the populations to communities and then we just last week we finish about the the communities right but by we know that as biologists uh, all these are interconnected although although we like uh, consider this as individual or population or community but i think all of them are interconnected um, and uh, there are a lot of interaction between communities as well right so for ecologists therefore it's not the whole idea of studying about the individuals or communities or populations but in reality the all these are in a either as a ecosystems or a little bit more if you take it as a landscape or even be that if you take it like a biosphere like it's a one planet at the end <clears throat> so these are all interlinked right so um, <clears throat> that's the reality right so for your our study purposes just to make things easier we learn about these different things if you want to study a little bit deeper into the subjects that's where we'll start uh, study about the the different components but so this is the reality they either as a ecosystem or it more than that the landscape or the biosphere so that's where actually we have to look into as biologists or rather as a ecologist so <clears throat> today we talk a little bit on this uh, ecosystems and landscape ecology and um, these are actually the real realistic ecology that we would uh, see in the environment right um uh if we just start with a small video just to get a uh, some insight Here you go. Hi, I'm Emerald Robinson, and in this What Is video, we're going to investigate Earth's ecosystems. An ecosystem is a community of living things interacting with the non-living parts of their environment. There are two primary parts of an ecosystem. The biotic part is made of all the living things, like plants and animals, fungi, and bacteria and viruses. The abiotic part is made up of non-living things like rocks and minerals, water and energy. Ecosystems can be almost any size. While most of us think of communities like a coral reef or a forest, an ecosystem can be a small pond or even the area beneath a large rock. Ecosystems need energy. In most cases, this energy comes from sunlight. Producers like plants take light energy and convert it into usable sugar energy through photosynthesis. As animals consume the energy from plants, they are eaten by other animals and ultimately decompose back into the soil. The energy moves through the ecosystem via a food web. Two of the most important concepts in this study of ecosystems are niche and habitat. A habitat is a place where an organism lives. Organisms must get nutrition, shelter, water, and the other things they need to survive from their habitat. Niche is an organism's special role in the ecosystem. What and how something eats, how it behaves, where it lives, all of these things define an organism's niche. Two organisms cannot occupy the same niche for very long. Eventually, one will outcompete the other for food and other resources, forcing the other to move or to go extinct. Many of the Earth's ecosystems are threatened due to climate change, pollution, and the human destruction of habitats. Scientists called ecologists study and monitor the health of ecosystems and continually work to discover new ways to protect these precious organisms and environments. For thousands of how-to and advice videos, right. Just a very brief introduction to. just to get an insight about the ecosystem which you already might know about these things but uh, so <clears throat> what really a ecosystem and then uh, what is the scale we are looking at um, 
now we come to the term scale. I think you have heard this term called the scale. Even in a mass map, there is a scale. Sometimes we call that small scale, large scale map. Right. So now the question for ecologists is in what scale we are looking at a issue. For example, uh, now these days the COVID, right? So it's a large scale. It's, it's, it's all over the world. Right? Because of that, it's a large scale we are looking at or we are considering, right? But uh, something like uh, <clears throat> uh, isolated, even like some pollution in one area. So it's a small scale, like right? So in the ecology, we have to consider like what kind of a scale you are looking at when you are studying something, maybe some impact or anything you are studying in the ecology. So you have to think of the scale, whether in what kind of a scale you are looking at, right? So that term scale is very important when you are, right? For example, here in this map, it's showing the, the, the large scale in the global primary productivity, right? So if someone going to work on this, it's going to be a huge project, right? So it's a global scale something, right? But uh, in many cases like us, we as ecologists we usually work in a small scale things, like what is the impact of pollution on one, one species, but not even a particular species, a species in a particular area, maybe in a river, maybe in a pond, maybe in one forest, something like that. So usually we study in a small scale, right? So that is very important in what scale that you are studying your ecology. Right? On the, the other hand, so what is really ecosystem, right? As you already know, is the, the two components, the biotic components and the biotic components together we consider as the ecosystem. But uh, the, the little different here is that when we define ecosystem, we can define this population of species grouped together into communities and interact with one another and with the biotic environment, right? So we're talking about the populations, but beyond that, it's a communities. It's not just the communities, but interacting communities, right? So some community, but they are coming, interacting with other communities as well. And everybody together interact with the biotic environment. So in simply that is what is the ecosystem. Right? So um, I know that you heard, heard these terms pretty sure, right? So now the, the problem with the ecosystem, if you're studying ecology into an ecosystem level or ecosystem ecology, the problem is it's very wide, very vast to understand is something is going to be really difficult, right? So that is the problem. <clears throat> so one of the reasons that's why we break into small places, small areas, just to make it things easy, right? But so therefore we are not going to go into very much detail on the, the ecosystem ecology. It's going to be a huge task, not for a first year uh, level uh, study. Um, that's come to a little bit of a higher thing, but we just need to understand some of the terms that we will be um, talking when you're talking about the ecosystem, right? So the trophic structure. Um, this also, I think you all have heard about this called the trip, tropic structure. That's the, like a feeding relationships, right? And then the food webs and food chains, how these energy transfer, these things that you have heard about. Right? So, so basically we call this as a tropic structure, but one of the key thing in an ecosystem is this kind of a tropic structure. So, so how they are arranged in a food chains and food webs, something like that, right? Um, another thing is the, the connectivity, right? The how connected they are in an ecosystem, like maybe, maybe some communities. So in an ecosystem, there are many different communities, how they are interconnected, what, what kind of, what degree, okay. so how close they are, um, 
uh, that kind of a relationship, so connectivity we need to think of, right? Um, so that is called the connectivity, how closely they are arranged, right? Um, <clears throat> another thing uh, in an ecosystem, we can see uh, these the relationships that may be tropic to other relationships. Sometimes we call bottom-up relationships, some are top-to-bottom relationship, right? Um, I'm not too sure that you have heard this one, right? Uh, but like when we talk about the management, we call the top-to-bottom management and bottom-to-top management. Sometimes the, the bottom people take a decision and it comes to the top. Just like in the university, you should have a sort of a bottom to top, like a department, faculty, and like a council. It's, it's a bottom to top. But there are some many cases, it's top to bottom. Right? Even in the ecosystem, there are some, some, some of the things that are controlled by the bottom level. Some things are controlled by the top level. Right? Um, for example, we, may, we can take as a, like a predator. Right. Predators are always in the top of a, a food chain. So we know that the predators are very important. They play a very important role in the ecosystem. So in that case, it's a top to bottom control. Because if you remove that predator, the, the, the next level will dominate. Right. And that will destroy the whole, whole, perhaps the ecosystem, right? On the other way, sometimes it can be bottom to drop. Like here it's given an example as like a, the fertilizer, any like any deficiency in a fertilizer will re reduce the, the, the plant growth, right? So if there is no enough plant, which means the whole ecosystem will collapse again. Right. So, um, so it's not only the top to bottom that has control, but bottom to top control as well. Right. So we have to keep in mind. Uh, so it's not really that uh, in many cases we consider like the, the top predators are the most important group that they are the one who keep in the, the, pop, the ecosystem balance, but it is not always. Right, sometimes can be the bottom level, right? So it's depend on the species and the situation, right? So, uh, so that's where the all the component in the ecosystems are important, including the decomposers, the bacteria. Right? So this control from both sides, from bottom to top, as well as top to bottom, right? So each level in a in a tropic status or in the ecosystem very important, right? So we need to understand that very clearly uh, to be a ecologist, right? Um, <clears throat> and the other important thing in the in an ecosystem are the the nutrient and the the energy, and particularly the nutrient, right? So um, this two components, nutrients and energy is very important and particularly the nutrient. Also, we know that the, uh, the nutrients, usually in the amount of nutrient in the environment, there is no large source of nutrient, we know that. Right? So we are not getting too much nutrient from some other planets or somewhere else, right? Everything, the nutrient that we have usually actually recycled within our, maybe in the ecosystem or even in the, within the planet. So these are usually recycled, right? But the energy, we get energy from the sun. So it's not really recycled, right? So, so I don't think I have to go to that detail, you know, these things. So energy usually is not really recycled. Uh, we are getting from the even the from the sun, All right? So, but nutrient they do recycle. So, uh, basically they cycle through the within the ecosystem or within our uh, the areas, right? The so 
we talk about the nutrients and their recycling or nutrient cycles, but energy, uh, but energy is flow from one chain, one, one tropic level to another full tropic level is a, a flow. Energy will be going to the uh, food chains, right? So the, if there is an energy lost, that lost is actually through the, the metabolism or the growth, right? Energy is lost when you are at Energy will not be at Convert when you are from one to another. It's convert when you are but uh, you, you can call it as a lost, but uh, it's not really lost, right? So, so again, very important uh, ecosystem uh, function is this nutrient recycling and the energy flow or the energy, how the energy is flowing in the, right? And another thing uh, when you're talking about the ecosystem is something very important, the biodiversity, how diverse that ecosystem is, right? So why do we care about the biodiversity? Why in an ecosystem, what is importance of having biodiversity? Right? The, the reason is if the diversity high, which means the most of the, the ecosystem services or ecosystem processes, I'll come to that one. You know the term ecosystem processes and services. There's high ecosystem services and uh, uh, processes if the diversity is very high because very complex that diversity, high diversity means that ecosystem is very complicated. That makes so complicated. The complicated ecosystems, which means they are more stable actually, because they have a lot of interconnections, a lot of uh, sources of uh, nutrients recycling. And so a lot of uh, different producers, different uh, uh, other level, so usually a very high biodiversity is actually, which means it's more stable community. Right? So it's very important that high diversity, keeping diversity is very important for the, the health of the ecosystem, right? Um, <clears throat> the other thing is the, the one I talk about, this ecosystem processes, right? Uh, this is another thing we need to remember. There are ecosystem services and ecosystem processes. It's sometimes very difficult to distinguish, but others are the ecosystem, the, the, the values or the, the resources that it provides. Samahara economic that can be food or something like that. Right. So these are goods and values, or maybe sometimes even some economic value, right? So, but others are the, the ecosystem has a lot of processes and services, right? ecosystem services and processes. ecosystem services, nutrient recycling, include carbon dynamics, carbon sequestration, at your level, actually, you just consider this as ecosystem services or ecosystem processes, but uh, they're interconnected. So it's very important that the, the ecosystems provide both this, uh, the goods or the resources for us to use or the, for the animals or the, whoever the resources used to use, but the ecosystem services. So these two components very important in an ecosystem, right? Um, it's not not the just the the resources, right? And another very important component in an ecosystem are the ecosystem engineers. I think we have discussed previously as well. Um, the the ecosystem engineers are the the whoever the animals who change the habitats in different ways, right? Um, so one might think that uh, if you change the habitat that will destroy the ecosystem, but uh, 
maybe some damages as well but uh, so sometimes this damage will provide uh, another benefit to another different ecosystem right so i have given here an example here uh, the like elephants right so they consider as ecosystem engineers because they uh, change this uh, uh, woodlands or the right, this kind of a forest into a sort of a grassland where a lot of other animals can survive on this grassland than this one right so of course the, this forest also good it's stable population but the difference here is the the right one this kind of a the ecosystem um, this will provide more opportunities for the other organism right so um, in that way the elephant is doing a good job for some other organism right so that's why we consider elephant as a ecosystem engineer right likewise there are many individuals serving as the ecosystem engineers like mainly the the organisms doing uh, some changes in the habitat like uh, even the even the changes in the soil right some beavers even sometimes pigs who change the little bit of ecosystem so they can be ecosystem engineers right so so again keep in mind that ecosystem engineers they do a little bit harm to the environment as well but that harm will provide another opportunities right so that's how the natural systems work right um, but now we might think that humans also do harm and that may be favorable for the ecosystem well you can argue that way also maybe some of the changes that we do might helpful in the ecosystems but the problem is we are doing too much harm we change a lot of in the environment and, and that is the 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 bad part of uh, that what we are doing right maybe small changes sometimes may be helpful but uh, not always that's the thing All right All right so <clears throat> the in a ecosystem this ecosystem engineers they are also very important they play a very important role in the maintaining a ecosystem right so another concept uh, when we are talking about the uh, ecology it's not really a, a something a part of the ecosystem but uh, we talk about this biome so sometimes you call biome so whatever biomes right um what is a biome right um, i think you have heard about this term also previously but it's something usually we talk about the biome a, a form of plants right for example tropical rainforest right so it is a, a, one example for a biome um what is the the how we are actually classifying these biomes one thing is mainly the main there are two main characters we are considering that is average temperature and the annual precipitation right so these are the two main characters or the the physical properties that we use so based on actually these two we can um divide these uh, different uh, biomes <clears throat> here in the x axis you have the temperature and the y axis you have the annual precipitation that's the rainfall right precipitation kele kem dano ne rainfall rainfall hui temperature ai gatta ma pita mene me oge me me vivida varge biomes tika anduna ganna puluwa kohomada ek karanne wan me කොඩ අඩු ටෙම්පරේචර් එකක් තියෙනවා කොඩ අඩු රේන්ෆෝල් එකක් තියෙන ආරිය and become tundra right and little bit of right but this, this case is a minus temperature right but uh, little bit higher temperature but still very low annual precipitation very low rainfall and there is a, another type of a biomes called taiga 
I'm not too sure whether you have heard about this taiga and tundra is two different uh, ecosystem, but uh, you know the others on temple, this forest, temperate rainforest and grassland, deserts to tropical forest to tropical rainforest. So this, you might have heard about this thing, but taiga and tundra, tundra and tahalatino, taiga, tahalatino, the difference is the tundra, uh, the main difference is actually there is no plant. It's just the ice cap, the, very much the, the, the cover is just the ice. I think in that case, it's a, a tundra, but it's taiga. We will have some forest as well. So that's a bit different. Anyway, taiga or tundra, we don't have this cold climate. So it's not our main concern anyway. So in biomes, right? Now, uh, now the where does this the term biome fall into? individuals from individuals to populations to communities to ecosystem and the or landscape or biosphere. Where does this the term biome fall into? Right? the make a diagram it's in between uh, ecosystem and biosphere, right? which means a biome is a, a collection of ecosystem. Right? Ecosystem keep a make it work. So I told him biome a biome a ecosystem is the right. So now we will understand how complicated this thing, right? And even there is another term called the landscape. How do you know the landscape? Landscape ecology. Me mukadde to kote mukadde me landscape ecology kiri. Mang ekati sarhato penna na. So things become very complicated as you go higher. Or in this case, is uh, as you go along the this uh, pyramid, it's becoming very difficult to understand population, community level. We can understand many, even ecosystem level. We can understand some, but anything beyond is very difficult to understand. Like it's a biome or biosphere. So many interactions we don't even understand. So it's very difficult to give uh, some sort of a concepts. So that's why we, that's one of the reason we are not going to learn very much about these things. It's been very complicated, right? Uh, so the problem is if you go down this pyramid, which means you have very becoming complicated as well as we have little understanding about these things. And they, we are not like a hundred percent sure about anything that we're going to talk about these things are because they're beyond our understanding, right? All right. <clears throat> so that's the, the basic setup of a, like uh, in the biosphere, right? And as I mentioned before, there was a term we talk about the scale. Uh, I have given some idea about the scale, the term scale, right? Uh, as again, you are in the first year, you might not go into that detail about the scale, but uh, in the future, if you really want to be an ecologist, the scale, the term scale is very important. So that's why I have given some definitions here. Um, <clears throat> don't confuse, don't get confused about these things. A bit uh, a difficult, some sort of a thing, but uh, simply taking, there are two things when we're talking about the scale is the extent and the grain, right? The extent is about the size and the how, the extent can be distributed, right? But that can be a, a spatial, you know, time, space, time, right? 
then means spatial can kochcher durakata yanawada kochcher kaalayak wenawada kiyana deke meka etu thamai extend kiyala kiyana the size of particular thing now the grain kiyala kiyana eka thamai apita kochcher deeply hari meke hondama wachane thamai api resolution kiyana wachane kochcher resolution ekkata mona hari deyak hoya ganna puluwan de kiyana eka kochcher fine details megena hoyalanna puluwan de kiyana eka thamai me grain kiyala kiyana right so that's why it's a bit difficult uh, but me dekhe me ekatu thamai attama me the scale ekak kiyana right but for your easy understanding me me scale kiyana eka pennanna puluwan menne me maps dekhe right this is a small scale map and this is a large scale map right me small scale large scale kiyana eke apout mata ekata ganna me me katha karanne me me size එක විතරක්ම නෙමෙයි හරි small large කියන තේරුම විතරක් නෙමෙයි small scale large scale කියන එකේ අර කලින් කීපර් fine details නැම් මේකි බලන්න මේ මේ map එකේ on your right hand මම හිතන්නේ ඔයගොල්ලන්ට මම මගේ මවුස් එක පේනවා ඇති දකුණු පැත්තේ තියෙන map එකේ මේ කුඩා මාරුයි මොන හරි විස්තරයක් හොයා ගන්නේ හරි so because there is no fine details but in this kind of a large scale map එක you can see even a uh, right small things even maybe a house or some things like in a google map even sometimes you can go up to a house level which means it's a large scale you can get the fine detail right so <clears throat> so if you are really a ecologist in the future so you have to think of whether you are studying something in a small scale or a large scale but keep in mind remember that this small scale or large scale It's not only talk about the 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 actual size, but how much details you can get, right? So these two together um, we consider as a uh, the scale, large scale of right. I hope you got the idea about that. Um, <clears throat> again, we talk about this uh, the scales, whether it's in a can be meters to kilometers to thousand kilometers depend on what you are looking at right um another important thing uh, that we need to consider in a ecology especially to the ecosystem level is we call edge effect right i'm not too sure again whether you have heard about this term edge effect um and i'm not too sure if there is a single term for for this as well um but very simply what is this edge effect is for example here this is the ecosystem as if you consider this as the boundary of a ecosystem right the boundary of a ecosystem and then the species in the middle here and the species in this edge will have quite different setup why because the species in the edge they have to deal with the other surrounding environment other maybe in other maybe ecosystem maybe in other buffer zone or maybe in other river whatever the maybe different habitat because of that the the interior species and the exterior species or the who living in the external environment they have to deal with different ways even with the same species they might have differences right so um, if you still remember we will talk something called ecotone mataka tinne eda man wachana ko ecotone kiyala wachana kiwa maka kari eka parisara eko anith ekin wenna ne e hari eta api kiyana ecotone ekak kiyala udaharanakata beach ekak right so beach is a ecotone which differentiate the land or the terrestrial environment from the the marine or the, the ocean right so that's why beach become ecotone it's a so kurme attadama gattot me edge ekakut e wage ecotone ekak wage it's maybe a little different from the inti right so why i am telling this because uh, <clears throat> if you are doing a ecological study so you have to consider this as well whether you are considering your your study doing in the interior of ecosystem or in the exterior where they might have different 
interactions. Like if you are doing a study in the Singharaja forest, right in the middle and the, in the edges where there's a lot of influence from the human and it's maybe a little different. If you do a, like a, do a like survey here only and you, and you come to a conclusion about the Singharaja forest, that may be very wrong because you have only considered the, the, the outer edge. And this is we call the edge effect. Uh, uh, ecological study edge effect avoid If you really want to do a study, then you have to consider edge, some samples from the edge as well as from the interior, right? And metanamati in a if there is disturbances to this sort of ecosystem, then an ecosystem divide into different regions and we call this the fragmentation, right? This is another very important topic in the ecology. We call it fragmentation, the habitat fragmentation, right? We talk about this quite often now because of the human intervention in particular, right? Because people cut, if you cut a road through this ecosystem and this ecosystem divide into two, we call this habitat, habitat fragmentation. And this is what has happened in the Singharaj forest that Lankagama, right? Constructing a road, make the habitat fragmented, right? Um, this is very true in the, in particular in the highways, right? Lanka, I mean, highways, then Godak, you know, highway will at, you know, take a prashna, I mean, I mean, serious, I mean, I mean, habitat fragmentation. Connection so this is one of the problem with this large scale projects. So that's a result in a fragmentation. Um, <clears throat> but there are a lot of options where we can get rid of this fragmentation. You can see here one example, this example from Germany, how they have construct this, uh, the highway and there is a, a forest either side and you have a corridor here, right? Corridor, how do you know? This one forest is connecting to another forest. It's just like another forest. And they are constructed forest connecting one from another and then the animals can move around with this kind of a, uh, a corridor, right? So jungle corridors, make a natural Naturally corridors, elephants, when they want to cross from one forest to another, we have to provide some Jungle corridor, right? uh, naturally, you know, forest. Sapi, through Kerala, you know, a corridor. So, if a elephant runs through, then the elephants can freely move between forests, right? So, similarly, if, if there is no natural thing, so then you have to have this kind of a <coughs> uh, artificial um, uh, corridors, jungle corridors. So this is very important. Uh, and this is another example. Uh, connecting these two habitats from the either side, they are connected. Uh, even though road is constructed, but uh, from the underneath the, the, the road, actually these are connected. So almost all the organisms, they can cross from one here to here. And because this is connected, unfortunately in Sri Lanka, most of the roads, they just divide the ecosystem into, into two. But uh, there is some, uh, I think this is in the central highway now, they have some areas they have constructed similarly. 
with some interconnections where the animals can go to here. Um, I haven't been there, I've just seen in the this picture. Um, it is very important that we have this kind of a, a corridors connecting, right? So this is where we use this ecological understanding, right? Maybe like even the engineers, they have to think of in this, they need to have this biological thinking uh, to have this kind of a, a um, setup that support the ecology, right? <clears throat> All right, so that's some of the thoughts that we have to think of in the, uh, talking about the ecosystems, right? So this very simply, but uh, then what is the, the term land safe ecology, right? So what is the difference from the ecosystem, from ecosystem to landscape ecology? So you see the sort of a definition, but it's not really a definition. Study of the pattern and interaction between ecosystems within the region of interest and the way the interaction affect ecological processes, right? It got complicated, but you see it's a, it, patterns and interaction between ecosystems. So it's a pathology may landscape ecology can ecosystem ecosystem interaction and the region ecosystem keep right. So now it is is it the same as the biome? The biome we are looking at particular temperature and as well as a uh, rainfall, but in the landscape ecology, you are not really considering that. Right? All right, I hope you got uh, some idea about that, right? Okay. Um, Sorry, um, so that's this landscape ecology um, here. Now, when we, if you talk about the landscape ecology again, as I mentioned before, this is going to be very complicated. Um, uh, sometimes this landscape ecology is a bit of a complicated thing. So, because uh, as not like a biome, the landscape is, it's depend on what you are looking at, right? So, and it's maybe, um, there's no particular definition for a landscape as well. So the, because of that, I'm not going to actually talk about the landscape, but a, if you are considering something as a landscape, it's we're talking about some heterogeneous area. Heterogeneous skin is any within or any other. We be the Deva Lulling had to make a two cup heterogeneous skill again at the putter. Me, it has no any particular definition, right? So you can consider few ecosystems together as a as a, a, a landscape, uh, but that become very complicated so because of that so we just need to know the term landscape ecology but uh, uh, it has no particular definition as well right um, so you can have your own definition for a landscape but but uh, uh, <clears throat> but in reality we see this kind of a landscape ecology like right? if you are in a particular area you do some studies then actually you are studying this kind of landscape ecology because that has the human settlement, the, the maybe paddy fields or the or the agricultural lands, but maybe near nearby the forests. But all together, that's all actually the landscape ecology. So in reality, actually the practical terms that we usually learn is actually the landscape ecology, because there is no many areas without human intervention. But the, the problem is the landscape ecology is that there is no, since there is no particular definition, it will be a little difficult. Right? So I'm not going to detail again, uh, but 
if you put in the all the terms that you learn previously into this something like a dispersal this person now we can talk about everything here into a landscape or a ecosystem um, we can use all these terms now into right in real reality in practical right even if you remember we talk about this meta populations matakati mai tanwa me mahima vachana pouch kara meta populations kela ka me populations ke neva tattatama then then wala inna populations samahalata podi podi wenas kam tiyena pula they might have some genetic variations so maybe even calling you reproductive variation ne wage dewa thiyena but me populations ke neva inni then then wala me ecosystem me ke then then wala inna populations wenas kam tiyena to me wata thama me meta populations kela kiyanne meva samaharlaata ekineka mix wenna puluwa Right, which is very important. Like if it is in the ocean, take as a coral reef, or in the Malawi, ma, we can call meta population scale. Samani, we call it a reef. In that way, they can go to another reef as well. Right, so there can be a small variation in the populations, but it is very important that the genetic variation, like a, or even other kind of population, like a genetic pool, like a development. Right, so. Uh, so that's how these uh, the terms we learned before, so we can link into ecosystem ecology, right? Um, <clears throat> and connectivity, again, I'll be calling fragmentation, again, Kiva, I mean, some patchy fragmentation, and that ended up in a patchy environment, right? So habitat defrag fragment or not like an inch patchy distribution, right? So and uh, <clears throat> the which means a uh, patchy distribution in our ecosystem now the diversity will lost right and then the when the diversity is lost then that ecosystem won't be that stable right now that is the reason right so if you divided the ecosystem into a small small pieces and the that will result in the loss of biodiversity and loss of biodiversity means the the stability the problem is that that, that lose the stability of a ecosystem and and you can imagine what will happen if this ecosystem is not stable the the whole ecosystem will collapse with time over the time right so that's where we can link everything in together right <clears throat> right so i hope uh, you got some idea about this ecosystem ecology which is very complicated thing as i mentioned uh, but uh, now the the problem is that human intervention right with the mainly because of the human intervention that there's a lot of changes in the the ecosystem from this deep fragmentation and the resulting patchy distribution all these and together with other <clears throat> many human influences there are a lot of issues in the marine environment right so um the in the this uh, many different human impacts has resulted in many issues in the marine sorry in the in the in the ecosystem not only marine right in the ecosystem so the that lead us to a, another topic to discuss that's the human impact on the environment right so that what we are going to talk uh, um, in the in our next title right so that's only actually i'm going to talk about this uh, very briefly on the ecosystems uh, which is going to be very complicated as you already understand right um anyone has any questions or comments so far <clears throat> <clears throat> 